Hello, this is Mr. Oberbeck with another video lesson. Today we're going to be looking at the angle-angle similarity theorem. We're going to be looking at how to identify if two triangles are similar based off of the AA theorem, and also how to name the two similar triangles. Let's get started. To begin with, let's go ahead and define our angle-angle theorem. So if we have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are in fact similar. So we have two triangles over here on the right side here. We have a blue triangle and a red triangle. We're going to show that they are similar and we're also going to be naming them. So the first thing we want to do is identify our sets of congruent angles. We can see based off the markings that angle B and angle E both have two arcs so they must be congruent. And then angle A and angle D also have the same amount of marks so they're also going to be congruent. Let's go ahead and write down those statements. So we had angle A is congruent to angle D, and then angle B is congruent to angle E. We now have enough information to say that our triangles are similar. And when we name our similar triangles, we want to follow the pattern of our similar angles. So for our smaller triangle, triangle ABC, I want to name the similar angles for the larger triangle in the same order I've named them in my smaller triangle. So know that angle A and D are similar. So I'm going to start with angle D. And then I know that B and E are similar. So I would say E next. And last but not least, we would have angle F. For our examples here, we're going to determine whether the triangle is similar, and then we're going to write a similarity statement and explain how we know that our triangles are in fact similar. To begin with, we have two different triangles here. We have the smaller triangle, triangle ABE, and a larger triangle ACD. These triangles overlap a little bit, so to go ahead and identify congruent angles, I'm going to redraw them as two separate triangles. So you can see that I have the smaller triangle AEB on the left over here and then the larger triangle ADC on the right. We know from the given information that we do have two angles already identified as 52 degrees, so we can label that as well. Some additional information that we might not have noticed is both of our triangles share angle A, and we can see that in my diagram, they both share angle A. So for my first congruent statement, I can go ahead and say that angle A is congruent to angle A. For my next set of congruent angles, these will be the ones that were originally given to us. So in that smaller triangle, it's going to be angle ABE. And that's congruent to, in my larger triangle, ACD. Now that I have two sets of congruent angles, I know that these are going to be similar triangles. And I can go ahead and name them. I'm going to start by naming my smaller triangle, which would be triangle ABE. And that's going to be similar to my bigger triangle. And when I name my angles, again, I want to go in the order of congruent angles. So I'm going to start with angle A, since A is congruent to A. And then I know that angle ACD is congruent to angle ABE, so I put C next, and then finally D. All right, why don't you guys go ahead and see if you can identify congruent angles in our next example. Over here with our two triangles. And then identify the similarity statement. So go ahead and hit pause now, and then try that on your own. Now let's see how you did. So we're going to be using the property that our triangle angles add to 180 to help us solve this. I know that the two angles here can be subtracted from 180 to find my missing angle, my third angle E. And in this case, if I do that, then we end up getting 64 degrees. For my other triangle, same thing. I can subtract the two given angles, the 64 and the 90 from 180, and I get my other angle that I'm missing, which is 26 degrees. Based off of that information, I definitely have some congruent angles here. So I can start by saying that angle C is congruent to angle K. I can also say that angle E is congruent to angle H. And I have my two sets of congruent angles, which allows me to say these triangles are then similar using the angle-angle theorem. All right, let's go ahead and name our triangles. My triangle on the left, this I'm going to call CDE. And that is similar to, so angle C is going to correspond to angle K because they're congruent. And then D is congruent to G. 
And lastly, E is congruent to H. So triangle K, G, H. In this example, we're going to show again that we have two similar triangles where you don't have any marked information other than these markings on our two sides for our triangles. And if you recall, that tells us that we have parallel lines. So we're going to have to use our parallel and transversals here to identify some congruent angles. To begin with, in the middle, I have two lines that intersect, creating a set of vertical angles that are going to be congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And then when I have my parallel lines on the sides here, and I have a transversal, alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So we actually have two sets of congruent angles here. We have angle R and angle T here. And then we also have angle S and angle U for the same reason. We have a transversal with two parallel lines. So we have a lot of different angles we can choose from here. I'm going to go ahead and go with those um, alternate interior angles. So we have angle S and angle U. Those are congruent. And then we also have angle R and angle T as congruent. So we can move on to our similarity statement. If I start with naming my triangle as triangle SRV, I want to make sure I'm naming congruent angles here. So S is congruent to U, R is congruent to T, and then V would be congruent to V. So we have triangle SRV similar to triangle UTV. All right, your turn. I want you to go ahead and attempt to identify congruent angles here and then give me the similarity statement. And again, you're going to have to use the idea that we have all of our angles in a triangle adding to 180. So go ahead and hit pause now and try this on your own. All right, let's see how we did here. Using the two angles in our first triangle, if we add those and subtract from 180, then we get that this top angle is going to be 58 degrees. And we know that we have a line here. Since we have a 90 degree angle on one side, we have a 90 degree angle on the other side, since our angles have to be supplementary. So again, I can add up the 90 and the 58, and I can subtract those from 180 to get my missing angle, which is going to be 32 degrees. All right, so when we name our angles here, we want to be a little careful because we can't just use a single letter. With my larger triangle, I have DCF as my first angle. And that's going to correspond to the other 32 degree angle in the smaller triangle, which will be EDF. And then for my second pair, I have the 58 degree angles. Again, we're going to need three letters using that second letter as our vertex. So I'm going to do CDF as the first one. And that's going to correspond to um, DEF. OK, now that we have our congruent angles, we can go ahead and move on to our angle angle theorem and name our similar triangles. So I have, to begin with, triangle CDF. And that's going to be similar to triangle DEF. We're going to go ahead and apply our similar triangle theorem to a real life situation here. So for our example, we have a flagpole that casts a shadow that is 50 feet long. So we have our flagpole and then our shadow that's 50 feet. At the same time, a woman standing nearby who is 5 feet tall and 4 inches casts a shadow that is 40 inches long. So we have our woman with her shadow as well. How tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? So we definitely could set up a ratio here with some similar triangles. I'm going to draw a triangle that represents our woman and her shadow, and another triangle that represents our flagpole and the shadow that it casts. So here are the two triangles to represent our situation. We have the triangle representing the woman and her shadow. Since she is 5 feet 4 inches tall, I converted that all into inches, which is 64 inches. And then the shadow is 40 inches long. For our building, we know that it has a shadow that is 50 feet long, but we really want all of our information to be in the same units. So we're going to convert that to inches as well, and that is 600 inches. We now want to use our similar triangles to help us solve for the height of the flagpole. So we're going to set up some ratios. I know that the height of the flagpole over the height of the woman should be the same ratio as the, uh, the flagpole's shadow over the woman's shadow. So here we have a series of ratios that we can use to help us solve. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So we get 40H is equal to 38,400. 
And then we can finish solving for the height of the flagpole by dividing both sides by 40. And we get that the height is equal to 960 inches. Notice though, our question says to the nearest foot. So I wanna then convert this into feet by dividing my 960 by 12. And we get that the height is approximately 80 feet. For our next example, a construction company wants to rent a scissor lift to trim the top of a tree, which is near an electrical line. The question is how tall does a lift need to be if at 3 p.m. a six foot tall man has a 10 foot shadow and the tree is casting a 38 and a half foot shadow. So just like our last example, you wanna go ahead and try and set up two triangles to represent our scenario. And then since we have similar triangles, you wanna use similar ratios to help us solve for the missing information. So go ahead and hit pause now and try and attempt this on your own and see if you can find how tall the lift needs to be. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn two triangles to represent our scenario. We have the six foot tall man with a 10 foot shadow. And then we have the tree with a 38.5 foot shadow. Conveniently for this problem, all of our units are the same, so we don't have to do any conversion, but we are gonna go ahead and set up a ratio here. So we are looking for the height of the tree. I'm gonna start with that. So I have the height of our tree divided by the height of the man is gonna equal the shadow for our tree divided by the shadow for the man. So we wanna make sure we're lining up our similar things here. Just like last example, we're gonna go ahead and cross multiply, giving us 10H is equal to 231. And then if you divide by 10, then we get the height of the lift is going to be two, uh, sorry, 23.1 feet. All right, that does it for our notes. Go ahead and get started on the homework and good luck.